<laughs> G'day guys, I'm Rob from AFA CMS. I've uh, come out with the boys this weekend just to do a bit of a cull for some deers for some farm local farmers around the southeast of New South Wales. This morning, uh, it was about 20 past seven, seven o'clock, somewhere around that. We got a nice doe. Uh, we've had a cooling in the, in the fridge all day. And we're just gonna show you how to process and how to cook up some, well, today we're doing uh, filled or bush style filet mignons. So it, we're gonna give you some snippets, a little bit of video and uh, show you how it's done and how it can be done out in the bush and how good the meat is. So we'll be back to you shortly. Can I get a bucket guys, please? A clean bucket. So what are you doing now? All right, so just gonna basically start portioning out the the deer, so breaking it up into shoulders for roast. We're gonna cut the actual whole back strap off. Then we'll take the legs off, turn it into steaks. Uh, the loins on the inside, we're gonna uh, turn into just just nice rolled fillet steaks that people can just cook up however they want. But the main thing that we're looking at today is this part here, which is the back strap. We're gonna turn into the filet mignon. We're gonna stuff them with. Uh, brie, double brie cheese, and a bit of spinach, and wrap them with bacon, and fry them up on the on the camp barbecue. So, if you well, this will come out in stages. Hopefully, while we're doing the videos, you'll get a, a little bit of a shot of everything that we're doing. So, at this stage, we're going to quarter it all up, break it down into legs, shoulders, rib cage, um, and we'll take it from there. So, we're boning out the leg at the moment, taking the hind, hind leg off. This, uh, it gives you your rump, it gives you all your top sides, all that sort of stuff. Same thing as beef. Deer's probably one of the most, well, tender of the the meat and game meats and flavorful. So yeah. everybody knows that's a that's the leg there. So you got your your rump, your top sides, your silver sides on the on the back here. That's your silver side. Your bell is on the front here. So they're really good for schnitzels, steaks, all that sort of stuff. Uh, your round steak is down the bottom here, which is pretty small, but still really tender. So we're now gonna trim the, the rest of the belly flap off. Uh, do we have that extra bucket? Yep. All the meat normally when we do the, uh, when, we, when we're cleaning, a lot of trimming in between the ribs. You can actually turn them into rissoles and uh, hamburger mints and all that sort of stuff. So don't waste the deer at all. If you you don't like doing that sort of stuff or you don't have a, a mincer, then pet food obviously. Don't just try not to waste. It's easy to get it all off. It's just a matter of slicing it out. Now, unfortunately, the brisket for the guys that do barbecue competitions, briskets are really small. There's not a lot of meat on a deer. So you can literally, I gave it to the guys from Black Bear Barbecue the other day, just to give it a sample and, and try. You can cut the chuck and brisket, whatever meat you've got left over, roll it up into a roast and put some stuff into it. Um, it came out really good. Apparently the boys really enjoyed it. But yeah, there's not a lot other than uh, soups and stews with the, the front forequarter. You can do shoulder roast once that's been boned out, or you can just bake that whole, one of the two. So I'll get on to moving, taking the other leg off quickly. So we're boning out the other side of the forequarter right now, the other legs come off. Um, so we're gonna basically just get this trimmed out. Clean that off. You can make sausages, everything out of out of venison. It's it's delicious. There's not a lot of fat, so you should, if you are going to be using venison to make snags and, and sausages and that sort of stuff, try find some pork fat. So you can use all that sort of stuff. It's very very lean meat. There's not a lot of fat in it. With the ribs, it's easy to bone out and just follow it up. Do you have a question, Ollie? Um, why deer game meat as opposed to not just going to the supermarket and um, getting a sirloin steak? 
Okay, why deer meat over going to a shop and buying sirloin steak, say beef or something, right? Oh, gunshot. Um, it's free range. It, it's, a, it's, it's basically an animal that has been left to roam, obviously. Cattle farmers are you know, struggling at the moment and with what we're doing with our company, we're trying to basically turn it into some sort of revenue. A lot of people are culling them, leaving them on the ground to waste. Um, so the iron and the nutrients in, in deer is ridiculous. It, it has the, the highest content of uh, omega fatty three acids and uh, omega six. I'd probably, I, I couldn't say that it's equivalent to eating salmon or fish, but it's nearly there. It's the only, it's the only meat that's got a real high content of omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6, plus the protein levels are literally for, you can eat, I think it's equivalent, uh, 200 grams of deer is equivalent to eating almost 600 grams of beef. So nutrient-wise, it's it's more protein and zinc nutrient than, than any other meat on the market. Um, and it's very, very rich in iron, really, really rich in iron. So that, that does that answer it? Pretty much, and it's free at the moment <laughs> until we're processing it. You spoke about how it benefited farmers. What are the ways that it benefits farmers? Uh, well, farmers are losing a lot of money at the moment due to loss of revenue. Deers are pretty much like, well, they're a feral species, they're an introduced species, so they're eating livestock. The farm that we're actually harvesting these ones off at the moment have now sown oats in their paddocks. So these deers are going in and literally eating all the the oats, all the seedlings and everything straight out of the paddock, which is which is pretty ridiculous. When you kind of sit there and think that one one paddock of oats, I think it's it's eight hundred dollars per acre for seed. So that's that's a literally a livelihood for, for some farmers. Um, when you're sowing a thousand acres, it's, I think it works out to what, 80,000 80, bucks. So, so we're getting rid of that. We're trying to control weeds because they obviously spread weeds through their, they transport it through fur and also through their, obviously their feces, for, uh, like feces and everything. So that's boning out the, Rib, rib cage. So, like I said, we're trying to leave and utilise as much as possible on the on the actual deer. And if we really wanted to get fancy, you could just turn this over. And I'll show you. If you take that off, take the sinews and everything out like that. If I could get a bit of twine cut around that, pull that through, cut those there, and you've got a perfect French rib rack as well. So there's so many different ways of cooking this up. So I'm gonna continue now to take out the back strap. This is probably this and the tenderloin on the inside are the two most prized meat on a on a deer a lot of guys when they go out deer hunting out in the bush like they don't take the whole carcass back we're fortunate enough that we can with what we do as a business a lot of people don't actually get to see where their meat comes from and how it's prepared so this is actually a good video to to show everyone how it's done. If there's any butchers watching, sorry if I'm doing it the wrong way, but that's how I know how to do it. That. Prawn quality backstrap. 
so I'll trim that up shortly. Oh yeah, what I'm doing right now is I'm taking the sinews off the tenderloins or the inner loin. So a lot of people would call that an eye fillet if it was beef. It's just a real delicate cut of meat. So there's one. Now D does not need to be cooked for a long time. It's got to be cooked rare. You can cook it, depends on where it's been harvested and who's harvested it. If it's a quick, clean kill, literally, it is so tender. You just cook it up however you want it. Like that's perfect. It doesn't have a lot of fat, so don't take it all off. Alright, so that's them. All I'm going to work on now is the back straps. So that's come straight off the deer. That's what I'm going to be making the filet mignons out of. So, proper way to... You can tear a lot of the stuff that you don't want on a back strap off. Leaves you with a silver sinew. Silver sinew, you slip the blade just underneath the skin. And just run your blade, a nice sharp knife, straight under. Push rid of a hell of a lot of it. And just keep it going. This only makes your meat really tough and stringy. So when you get a bit of meat that's gristly, you got to chew on, but uh, this is the stuff that does it. Like I said, nothing goes to waste. You can make hamburger mints, everything out of this sort of stuff. These sinewy parts, best thing for your dogs. Let them have a go at that. Okay, uh, free range meat, the terminology of free range meat, is an animal that has no boundaries and can travel from property to property freely. That's free range meat. Or if an animal that grazes in a paddock without restriction. This is not organic. Um, I'm not, I've never advocated that game meat is organic because obviously they do go into paddocks where farmers do spray their crops. So under no circumstance can you classify as an organic organic meat. But as a free range meat, these are not, under no circumstance are these any animals that have been farmed. So it's free roaming and it's free ranging. So that's the only the only reason how I can justify calling this a free range meat. On the silver side on the back, that's just where it's connected to the ribs. You just got to get rid of that if there's any root cartilage. That little sinew there. Cut that there. And that is perfect for pet line. So that's first. So what we're going to do is get this ready for the mignons. Just cut it there. Now get the other ones ready. Doing now? Uh, boning out the leg. 
just show people different ways of doing it. Like with legs, a lot of people think that it's just, you know, a lot of companies just throw them out and put them in for uh, pet food, um, a lot of these processes. But the leg, deer leg itself, if you cut it properly and get it right, makes some of the best steaks and roasts. So what I want to show you is how to properly bone it out. Well, properly in the bush, bone it out. There's no butcher shop here, so. Right, so the shanks are going together with the front ones. So that's your bell. What I'm going to do now is pull this apart. I'll show you where you get your top sides and everything from. So that's your top side. Top side's good for either steak or schnitzel. This is Jirello, which is same thing, schnitzel, small steaks. If you do it in Voltinis and stuff like that, you can do that and use it. There's your rump. Rump's an idea, only tiny. So you might got to make the most of every single bit of it. Silver side. And that's your round steak. So now what I'll do is I'll dress these up, get them all ready, and I'll show you how to get the steaks out of them. Right yeah, we've um we've just trimmed up all the, the leg steaks and all the all the cuts. So we've got a round steak. Jadadla, top side, silver side, and rump. Like rumps on a deer are quite small, so you're not going to get a hell of a lot out of it. Your, your prime cuts out of this would be top side and the silver side. Rumps are really good if you want to make them as a steak. Uh, schnitzel, schnitzel steak, and mainly schnitzel on those as well. Or you can do involtinis um, and that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to give you a quick demo on how to cut them. Your rump steak is just straight cut down. About a centimetre thick. That's your rump. They're only very little. On a deer, if you're going to do like sandwiches and stuff, it's great. So, so that's your rump. No, your rump. Put that over there. Beautiful, pretty pink knife that was given to me by Shannon Walker. That's your top side. So you, you can turn them into good sized steaks if you really want to. We had these last night. And I think the boys enjoyed them. Enjoy those steaks last night. So you can butterfly it, get a nice thick steak, or if you want to turn them into schnitzel, and just cut them normally and then just whack them with a mallet, a meat tenderizer, just to thicken them up. You can use your knife if you want. just break it down 
I'll just give you a good size, good size steak if you want to do want to do a schnitzel. So it's your top side. Your round is pretty much the same as your rump. Just straight cut down. This is only very fresh, so it's hard to to cut. But you get a nice good slice out of that. It just gives you good little steaks. Like I said, venison has near nil fat. And then you've got your silver side. Probably best best cut for schnitzel. And that'll be the same if you go to your butchers. That's a schnitzel cut, mate. Very tender. This deer is just literally falling apart. But it's that tender. So that's your silver side. And like I said, out of these, you just butterfly these. And you can make involtinis, little schnitzels, anything you really want. So that's pretty much everything that we've done tonight. Uh, preparing all this meat. We've got one leg to go. I'm gonna bone that out and put that into a roast. Shoulders are for roasting as well. Um, I'll bone those when we get home. So I'm gonna now make the... Um, what am I making? Filet mignon. Oh, filet mignon. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so I got to start making the filet mignon mignons now.